For the latest news and updates on Tibet, subscribe to Yalun YouTube channel. And don't forget to click the notification bell icon. So good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Ah. So I'm going to present a brief story of Tibet. Tibet is the country your parents, your grandparents came from. You are now in Canada, but Tibet is your country and we are all Tibetans. In your school, I'm sure you must have met people from Africa, people from Japan, people from India uh, or China or Korea, different other countries, right? But when you will be asked this question, what does it mean Tibetan? Where is Tibet? What is Tibet? People will ask you. So you need to know, you need to have an answer. What is Tibet? And this is what I'm going to talk about. Okay? So listen to this very carefully. This is your answer when you are asked, what is Tibet? And uh, in this presentation, when I show pictures, I will say names, I will say certain numbers, 
I want you to remember this because after the presentation, I'm going to ask questions. Yeah, so pay attention. I'm going to ask questions on my presentation. Yeah, so all of you pay attention on what I am saying. So when we talk about Tibet, many people actually say it's a small country, but that's not true. Tibet is very big country. It's such a big area. This is Himalayas. And this is where Mount Everest is, the tallest mountain in the world. It's in Tibet, it's in our country. The tallest mountain, Mount Everest. What is the tallest mountain in the world? Mount Everest. Mount Everest is in our country. Mount Everest is ours. It's not China's, it's not India's, it's not Nepal. Mount Everest is our country. It's our, it's our mountain. Okay? So remember, the tallest mountain in the world is ours. Yeah? So I'll tell you. Now, when we look at this, we will see here. Tibet is in Asia, in the middle of Tibet. See, to the south, there is Nepal. To the south, there is India. And to the east, there is China. China is in the east. Okay? And to the north, you see Mongolia. And to the west side, there is East Turkestan, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. Right in the middle of this is Tibet. Tibet is 2.5 million square kilometer of land. It's so big country. There are some older ones also. Do you know how big is Canada? This country, how big is Canada? How big? Can you tell me? Yes. How big? So good. Very good answer. 9.8 million square kilometer of land. How big? 9.8 million square kilometer of land. Very good answer. So compared to that, Look at Tibet, it's 2.5 million square kilometers of land. It, Canada, is the, Canada is the second largest country in the world. Canada is second largest country in the world. Now compared to Canada, Tibet is one fourth the size of Canada. If Canada is cut into four pieces, one size is Tibet. It's that big. Tibet is, so you remember, how big is Tibet? 2.5 million square kilometer of land. You remember? You remember? How big is Tibet? 2.5 million square kilometer of land. Yeah? And what is the population of Tibet? Can anybody tell me? How big is the Tibetan population? Six million, okay? Population of Tibet is six million. Can everybody do this, do this, do this? Six million, yeah? How big is Tibet? Six million, okay? So if we divide 2.5 million square kilometer of land to six million, each of us will get half a square kilometer of land. That big, yeah? Half a square kilometer of land is what we get. And that country is ours. Yeah. Today, today Tibet is under Chinese occupation. It is not free. Tibet is not free. It is under Chinese occupation. Yeah. Tibet is not free today. Therefore, we are here. Your parents, grandparents, all of them escaped from Tibet and came to India and then came to Canada. Right? So, if Tibet had been an independent country, Tibet should be the 11th biggest country in the world. Tibet should be 11th biggest country in the world. So remember, Tibet will be 11th biggest country in the world. So remember this, I'm, when I go back after my talk, I'm going to ask you questions on this. Yeah. Now, this Tibet is a plateau. A very unique geographical landscape. Tibet is like a table. See, it's very low on the floor. It's tall. It's high here. Tibet stands at an average of 
4,000 meters above sea level. Which means Tibet is 4 kilometers up in the sky. Tibet is so high compared to lowlands of India, lowlands in China. But Tibet plateau is like a table. It's so high. But once you get here, it's plains. So this kind of land. So again, remember, Tibet as a geography is a plateau. What is it? Plateau. Can everybody say what? Plateau. plateau. Yeah. P L A T E A U. Plateau. Tibet is a plateau and it stands at the average height of 4,000 meters above sea level, which means 4 kilometers up in the sky. Do you see? Look at this very carefully, everybody. Do you see these small dots, blue dots here? These are all lakes, fresh drinking water lakes, snow melt water, and there are thousands, hundreds and thousands of lakes. You can, there are so good waters, you can kneel down and drink water directly and nothing will happen to you. Very good water. That is Tibet. And these kind of lakes, there are hundreds and thousands of lakes in Tibet. Is there anyone who can recognize which mountain peak is this? You tell me, do, do you know? Do you know the name? What is it? What is it? What, what, is, what is the name of this mountain peak? Uh, no? Anyone is? Yeah. No, 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 no. Someone, someone else, someone else tell me. What is this? What is this? Yeah. Do you know? Say that again clearly. Mount Kailash. Mount Kailash. Okay, give them a clap. Mount Kailash. This is Mount Kailash. In, in Hindi we say, in Indian language we say Mount Kailash. But there is a Tibetan name for it. Do you know? There is a Tibetan name for it. We are Tibetans, right? We speak Tibetan. So we, there is a Tibetan name for it. What is it? Do you know? Come forward, come forward. Tell me, tell me, tell me. He has the answer. Everybody, listen very carefully. Khang Rinpoche. Khang Rinpoche. Give him a clap. Great. So everybody remember, this is Mount Kailash in Hindi or English. But in Tibetan language, in our language, we say Khang Rinpoche. So everybody say this. What? Khang Rinpoche. Yeah. Khang in Tibetan means snow. Khang, snow. You play snow outside, right? Somebody when it snows, we play Khang. Rinpoche is precious. The most precious snow mountain in Tibet is Khang Rinpoche or Mount Kailash. Many religions, Hindus, Jains, Buddhists, all of them respect this. Yeah? And there you can go for a Kora. Do you go to Kora around monasteries and stupa? Like that, you can go for a Kora here. You can go travel for three days. Three days you can travel, walk around this Mount Kailash. Tibet looks like this, so much of snow. You have snow in Canada, but we have more snow in Tibet. And it's very high altitude. See, I told you, it's high. But once you get to the tableland, it's like this grassland grassland for hundreds of kilometers it's just grassland there are people who ride horses and there are people who drive cars in Tibet and because there is no ups and downs they can drive for kilometers together and some people fall asleep while driving and there's no accident there are people driving their cars on the grassland and they meet with no accident because the landscape continues it's a plane yeah so this is what we call Changtang. everybody remember this tibetan name remember because i'm going to ask you questions after this this is Changtang. everybody say Changtang. yeah Changtang. so in Changtang, then there are nomads these are nomads there are yaks here there are tens and there's a mastiff dog here there are all these white dots are sheep. 
sheep and goat. So Tibetans are nomads. They are, they are nomads. They take care of their uh, livestock. Nomads, we say in English, nomads. But there is a Tibetan word for it. Do you know? Is there anyone who will tell me what is the Tibetan word for nomads? You, you, you know the word? You know the word? What is it? What, what do you say? In Dongpa. Dongpa. Very good. Dongpa. Remember, again, later I'm going to ask, what is, what is the Tibetan word for nomad? Dongpa. Yeah? So some of your parents may be Dongpas. So uh, later, ask your parents. Ask your parents. Were we droppers in Tibet? Ask, okay? Later. Some of your parents, actually most of your parents may have been droppers in, in Tibet. Yeah? So we, they were, most of Tibetans are, Tibetans are very good at horse riding. Is there anyone who has done horse riding? Later? Anyone? You have done horse riding? One, two, how many, how many? Three, oh, many of you, you have done horse riding. Like this? Just horse riding. But not so fast like this, yeah? Thank you. Very good. See, Tibetans in the ancient times, we were all warriors. Tibetans used to ride horses. There were no cars or jet planes in Tibet. There were no jet planes or cars. Tibetans used to ride horses and they used bows and arrows. Tibetans were warriors. We are all descendants of warriors. There was a point of time that the Tibetans were warriors, they rode horses, used bows and arrows, they created havoc, they, 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 they led military war into China and Mongolia. And Chinese were so scared of the Tibetans because we used to create this. So we were once warriors. We, our people, rode horses and use bows and arrows and create an empire. There was a point of time, certain parts of China was under Tibetan occupation and also Mongolia. So what were we? One point of time, we were warriors. Our parents, grandparents, we were ancestors, our, ancestors, our forefathers were warriors at one point of time. What is this? Tell me. Yeah. Ah, this is a yak, yeah? So, what do we say? Uh, but yak is English pronunciation. What is the Tibetan pronunciation? What is the Tibetan pronunciation? How do we say in Tibetan? Anyone? You, you want to say? How do, how do you say yak? Yak is English, right? Yikiti, yikiti, yak. 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 Yeah, see, yak. In English, we say yak. Especially the Amer Americans say yak. Yeah. yeah? So, there is a Tibetan word. Yak. Yeah. Mm. Now, this is yak yeah, is the male. Yak yeah, is the male. There is a female yak yeah, and there is a name for it. Anyone who can tell me what is the female of yak? Yeah? Female of yak. Yeah. Anyone? You, you want to say? You want to say? You have an answer? Are you sure? Yeah. Ah, oh. very good. D. D is the female of yak. What is it? D. D R I. D. Everybody say it. Say it. D. And the spelling. Spelling. D R I. D. I want all of you to say it loud. D. Ah, very good. So you remember now. You remember. What is the female of yak? Very good. Now you remember, right? Don't forget it. Because, because many Americans, Canadians, they keep on saying yak milk, yak milk. It's funny, right? Yak is the male. There is no milk from yak. Yak is the male. D is the female. Yeah? Okay, so remember? Tibetans developed a very unique architecture the way they built houses like this for example there is steel here this is steel and there are bricks and there are some plastic wires this is modern technology right modern house building tibetans used three important materials all of you remember very clear remember what i'm saying tibetans developed 
unique way of building their houses and they build their houses out of three materials three three materials all remember mud wood and stones mud wood stones everybody say mud wood stones sa do shin say sa do shin three tibetan when they built structures like this this is not small it's giant structure look at the size of a human being there such a giant structure still holding this is bigger than this your kangjon chenreli this is bigger this is actually four times bigger than this this structure and there is no steel or wire or plastic or screws in this made only out of three materials what are they mud wood stones and in tibetan we say sa do shin ah we have to remember yeah what is this anyone tell me what is this what is this okay before i ask for everybody to guess i'll tell you a funny story on my speaking tour i went to washington dc the capital capital of the united states i did a presentation like this like this now i did a presentation on a huge american student and one young girl raised her hand and she said listen to this listen to this listen to this she said i think it's a shopping mall she didn't know she didn't know that the, she said this is a shopping mall now there is someone who knows this what is what is this what is this tell me you you want you want to answer yeah peja ah peja these are scriptures religious scriptures okay these are hundreds thousands of religious scriptures these are prayers they actually look like this what is written here it's tibetan script tibetan script and these are handmade papers and the script is handwritten handwritten script so this kind of pecha we say pecha pecha in tibetan pecha yeah everybody say pecha pecha so later when you go inside your teachers will show you the pechas there are so many pechas there in the in the in the churan you will see yeah so these are religious scriptures these scriptures contain um materials on poetry philosophy uh, uh dialectics science medicine astronomy astrology all these subjects you will find in these scriptures so this is the country of tibet now you understood yeah the landscape everything that country had been invaded upon china came into tibet and they said they said go away tibetans we are rulers so china came into tibet bringing this kind of pictures these are chinese leaders they came into tibet with guns and they threatened tibetans and our people they were driven away from our own country because they were using guns and they were killing people so that's how your parents grandparents had to escape tibet come to india and finally landed up in canada so we are the real owners of tibet we are the real owners of tibet but china came into tibet and that's what they did and then our leader his holiness the dalai lama he had to escape tibet ride on a horse like this we were very sad moment that we lost freedom of our country yeah so you know from your parents you will know how they became refugees yeah refugees they had to leave their country come into india and then come to canada and they sought asylum so that's how they became citizens of canada but we cannot forget our story okay so this is the story we all came from and later on coming to india uh, some of them some of your old elders may be here his holiness the dalai lama he brought all the children together and gave them education and look at this some of them didn't even have shoes to wear we were in such 
sad situation, no shoes, but the children, they study, they educate. His Holiness the Dalai Lama gave him education. It was Tibetan education. There's education in English and Hindi, science, yeah, social sciences, mathematics, they studied. That's how we, we maintained our freedom movement. And we continue to say that we want to go back to our own country. So this is the first generation of Tibetan children who later led the freedom movement and continues even today. But inside Tibet, majority of our people, those who are outside, it's only 150,000 Tibetans. Okay, look at, the, hear this number. Tibetans outside Tibet, outside Tibet, in India, Nepal, Bhutan, Canada, Europe, all put together, is 150,000. How many? Say, say that again, 150,000. Only 150,000 Tibetans outside Tibet. Majority of our population, our people, are still there in Tibet under Chinese occupation. See? So this is what happened. So this is a protest that happened in Tibet. In Tibet. In 1987. Okay? I'm again giving you another number. Remember, this happened in 1987. Which year? 1987. This protest happened in Tibet where the Chinese, they used guns like this and killed our people. Yeah, they used guns like this and killed our people. This happened in 1987. And therefore, later 2008, this is protest in 2008. These are Tibetan university students. Tibetan university students inside Tibet. They are saying, we will not give up. We want freedom. China, go back to your own country, we are saying. So this happened in 2008. These are Tibetan nomads. You see, oh, what did I say? Nomads in Tibetan? The word Tibetan, Tibetan word for nomads? I said, I said, we, we used the word earlier. What is the Tibetan word for nomads? Drogpa, Drogpa, okay, Drogpa, remember, huh? D-R-O-K-P-A, so these are Drogpas, Drogpa, so what the China is doing is now, they are taking away our land, they are bombing the mountains, boom, they bomb our mountains, and then they take away natural resources, they take away gold, lithium, rare earth, materials to China, and then they make cheap made in China products and they sell it to the world. So this is what they're doing. They're killing our people. They're taking our, our natural resources, our gold and lithium, they're taking away and they're selling it around the world. And this is happening in Tibet. While nomads like this, nomads like this, they, they're, they live on a huge pasture land. They are now losing their land and they are becoming, they now live in houses like this. Really sad situation. They have lost their land. They have lost their animals. They have lost their yaks. They are now kept in houses like this. This is our situation. You see? And when we say Tibet, no, no, later, question later, question later. Let me finish this. So, this is a map from, from United States. There was a point of time Tibet used to be free and independent. See, Tibet, China, India, very clearly written. I'm not saying this is a map from the United States. US map is saying at one point of time, Tibet was independent, like this. This is the situation today. This is the situation today. China is 9.6 million square kilometer of land. And we have already seen Someone saying, Canada is 9.9 .9 million square kilometers of land. United States is 9.8 million square kilometers of land. China is 9.6 million. Yeah? So, if this is entire China today, today, China has occupied Tibet, East Turkestan, Southern Mongolia, and Manchuria. These four countries. All of them put together make 60% of China's landmass. So China is living on a huge occupied land. You see? 
This is important, we all must know. Real China is only this red part. This is a real China. But they had occupied all these countries. And they had taken natural resources. And beating and killing people. And this is... What is this? Tibetan national flag. Okay? Uh, many people actually say, Hyogi Tharjo. It is not Tharjo. It is Gedar. What do we say in Tibetan? Hyogi Gedar. National flag. Yeah? We say Hyogi Gedar. Okay. So this is my presentation. Now, get ready to answer questions. Okay? I'm going to go back to some of the slides and ask you questions. Are you ready for answers? Okay? I gave you certain names, numbers, years. Okay? Try to recollect. So I'm going to go back to certain um, things like this. What did I say? This is a scripture. Scripture in English. And I gave the name in Tibetan. What is it? What did I say? What is the word, Tibetan word for scriptures? Pecha. Pecha. Very good. Remember, Pecha. Scriptures. Okay. Um, I'll go to another. Ah, here I said something very important. I said Tibetans developed a unique architecture. They built their houses out of three important materials. Who will say the three important materials? Who should I give you? You want to say? Mm, this three materials. Okay. Very good, very good. Three important materials. Mud, wood and stones. Three important materials the Tibetans use and these kind of structures which were built in so many years ago are still standing. Yeah, massive structures Tibetans created. No use of plastic or steel, wires, cement and uh, bricks. Only out of that. And they're still standing. Okay. Ah, one question here. I said, Yak is the male. What is the name in Tibetan for the female of Yak? Who will give me the answer? Someone, someone, someone. You want to say? You want to give? You want to give? What is the word? D. D. Very good. D. Okay. How do you spell D? Everybody, everybody say, say it again. To me. Oh. One, two, three. D R I. Very good. I'm very happy now. <laughs> so you remember. Yeah, D. So when, when the Canadians, Americans say uh, Yak milk, and we'll say, Hale, right? We'll, we'll make fun of them because Yak is the male. D is the female. Yeah? Okay. Here, here I said these white dots here. I said this is something. What did I say it is? What are, what are they? What are these white dots? Sheep. Very good. Sheep and goat. Goat and sheep. That's, these are the thing. And what are these black ones? What are these black ones? Yeah. Yes, very good, very good. Aha, I gave one Tibetan word for this Mount Kailash. One Tibetan word, someone who remember. Do you know, do you know, do you know? Remember? Kang? Ah, yeah. <laughs> very good. So this is Khang Rumuche. Everybody remember what did I say? This is Khang Rumuche. Yeah. So this is Mount Kailash. Okay. This is the holiest of all the mountain, uh, mountain, mountain peak in Tibet. The holiest, holiest. No one has climbed yeah, over this mountain. Time. No one. It is not allowed. No one can climb on this. So, in English we say Mount Kailash and in, in Tibetan we say 
Kang Rinpoche. Everybody say this again. Kang Rinpoche, once again. Very good. Okay, you can see it, but I'm still wanting to know someone telling me what is the total area of Tibet? What is the total area of Tibet? Someone who will tell me. Do you want to say? What is the total area of Tibet? Okay, no. Little less. Very good. 2.5 million square kilometer of land. Okay, Tibet is 2.5 million square kilometer of land. And we also said, how big is Canada? This country, Canada, how big is Canada? Shout out, shout out, tell me. Right, so Canada is 9.9 .9 million square kilometer of land. Tibet is 2.5 million square kilometer of land. And I also said, if Tibet had been free and independent today, I said it should have been that kind of a rank. What rank would it have been Tibet, if Tibet had been free and independent? How big Tibet should have been? Right. If Tibet had been free and independent today, it should be the 11th biggest country in the world. 11th the biggest. Yeah? But it is not today because our country is not free, is under Chinese occupation. Yeah? That's it. So any questions from here? Anyone? You have a question? Sorry? Ha. Huh. Okay, so I was showing this picture. I was showing this picture and her question is, do the Tibetans in India have money to buy shoes? Thank you so much. It's such a beautiful question. Um, now I'm telling you, I live in India and we have enough money to buy shoes and take care of our education, mostly because of His Holiness the Dalai Lama and because Tibetans are very hardworking people. Yeah. So Tibetans have not only shoes, there are big houses and schools and all the facilities. Yeah? Okay. Um, any other Do you have a question? Is Dalai Lama still alive? So the question is, is the Dalai Lama still alive? Yes, His Holiness is alive and kicking. He's at the age of 87. He's healthy. And recently before coming here, I saw His Holiness in India. And he's healthy and doing fine. And he's our great leader. Uh, you have a question? Yes. Ha, so the question is that is the hate against the Dalai Lama finished? I think it's not a hatred against Dalai Lama, it's just a misunderstanding. Yeah? Sometimes it happens. For example, I am standing here with this girl. Someone takes a picture and says something, something, something about me. But they don't know that this is my younger sister. People don't know, right? That kind of misunderstanding happens. But now people are understanding they, that they cannot judge anything from one photograph or one video. And people are now understanding and they say, oh, I'm so sorry. I misinterpreted. I misunderstood. Um, you have a question? Okay, so the question is when did His Holiness the Dalai Lama escape Tibet and came to India? That was in 1959. Okay, everybody remember? Which year? 1959. So this year, this time, this image, His Holiness the Dalai Lama is escaping Tibet, coming to India. Which year? Which year? I want everybody to say it. Everybody. 1959. Very good. Very good. Any other question? You have a question. Sorry? 
Ah, okay. So the question is, when did the war started? This, this is 1949. Okay. So we have to remember, China started to come into Tibet in 1949. And in 1959, His Holiness the Dalai Lama had to escape, leave Tibet, and come to India. So remember two important years. When did China come into Tibet first? 1949. When did His Holiness the Dalai Lama escape and come to India? 1959. So don't forget. Yeah? Okay, you have a question? Yeah. Ah, okay, so this is the most important question. Why did China invade and come to Tibet? Okay, it's a very important question. I want to answer. I want everybody to pay attention. Okay, so in 1949, firstly, China became a communist country. Hmm? They became communist country. And Mr. Mao Zedong, this person, Mao Zedong was the first chairman of China. And when they become communist country, they said, let us invade our neighboring countries. Let us become big and powerful. So they invaded not only Tibet, they invaded other countries. Ha, look at this. 1949, they became a communist country. They started to invade Tibet, Mongolia, Manchuria, East Turkestan. These countries, they started to invade in 1949. And, but the Tibetans kept on fighting. Our forefathers, you know, the, the elders that you see here, their forefathers, the four China, they said, no, you cannot just come into our country and kill our people. They kept on fighting. So the fighting went on. So in, in 1959 came to a point of time that His Holiness the Dalai Lama had to escape Tibet and come to India. So the reason is they wanted to expand their country. They wanted to in, increase the territory and area and they invaded neighboring countries. Uh, okay, you have a question. Sorry? Ah, so the question is to me, how many times did I go to jail? So um, I'm just checking my time because I need to go. I need to take the train and go to Oruba after this. Um, so the question is, how many times did I go to jail? You know, I've been an activist my entire life. Um, I'm now 49. My age, my age is 49. And in 49 years, because I've been an activist, um, I've been to jail 16 times. One, six, 16 times. And, and not for any other reason, mainly because I protested uh, for Tibet. So I've been to jail in India. I've been to jail in Tibet also. In Tibet, the Chinese beat me. But in India, it is easy. Uh, they sent you to jail, answer questions to your jail guards, and also in the court but all this for the freedom of our country yeah so been to jail 16 times i'll take one last question because it's just 11 o'clock and i need to go and take the train i'll take that little boy's uh, question yeah what's your question uh, so why did they just work together sorry what Wow, what a wise question. Thank you. Such a brilliant question. So the question is, when we look at this situation, his question is, why aren't these people coming together and fight China together? Such a brilliant question. And I'm sad to say, we still haven't been able to put together our acts. Uh, we are meeting. We are doing sometimes protests together in New York and Paris and different other places. But because we are all so divided, we don't understand each other's language. And China has kept all these pockets. It's just like this. For example, this, this room, this is Tibet, it's enclosure. 
This Mongolia, separate. Manchuria, separate. East Turkestan, separate. So, someone can from here cannot go there. Someone from here cannot go there. This is what China is doing. They kept all these people separate. They don't understand each other. But each of them think that I am most beaten and suffering. Each of them think that we are the most unfortunate. But there is no understanding among them. Okay? So you have such a brilliant perspective and such a wise thinking. I wish you really well that you, you become our leader in future. Um, so I cannot take any more questions because it's time for me to leave. I need to go to the train station, take the train and go to Orova. So, um, you know, uh, um, thank you so much. And my last word for all of you. So you saw, okay, now hands down, hands down. My last word to all of you. So you saw that Tibet is our country. We are all Tibetans. Our country is not free. Yeah? Our country is not free today. Hello. Our country is not free today. Yeah? This is a time for all of you to get yourself educated. Our education is our power. What is our power? Education. Our education. If you don't give yourself enough education, you are not going to be strong. Your strength is not how you look. Your strength is not how much money you have in your power. Your strength is your education. What is your strength? Your education. Okay? And kindness in your heart. Two human power. Human strength. Two. One is the education. The other one is the kindness. Okay? What are the two strengths of human beings? Education and kindness. Kindness in a heart. Yeah? If you are educated and if you're kind, you are a strong person. Yeah? So work on that. And His Holiness the Dalai Lama wants all of you to get educated, become strong, and then you can serve Tibet. Okay? So this is all they have to say. And in the Thunder, and they thunder Hanjun Chuneling, Genzi, Labje, Goje, and Trilubdu Sopa, Samaling, Tuchen, and Shuei, Maran Kugab, Yabusu, Shumpulia, Puginetu Shea, and Nathan Shuei, Tuchena.